book is called Radical Theology, A Vision for Change. It's published by Indiana University Press as a part of their uh, Continental Philosophy of Religion series. And I wrote it, I guess, for two main reasons. Um, one, there's been a lot of attention in the last uh, 10 years or so with uh, radical theology. Um, and there's been a kind of misunderstanding and critique of radical theology that, that sees radical theology as a kind of, um, how to put it, a kind of self-styled radicalism uh, or a kind of posing. That to say something is radical is somehow to suggest that it's, it's more cutting edge or more progressive than other forms of thought. And for me, the term radical theology isn't about that. It's not about sort of claiming that you're more cutting edge than other forms of thought. But instead, it's a recognizable lineage of thought that goes back to uh, the late 1950s and 1960s in what was then termed the Death of God movement. The two main um, interlocutors or the two main contemporary figures that I uh, deal with throughout the book are John Caputo, who's a continental philosopher of religion, and the other figure is Catherine Malibu, who's a uh, Parisian philosopher who's a student of Jacques Derrida's. For me, radical theology is a, a form of post-liberal theological thought that emerges out of the death of God in the 1950s and 1960s, and the idea of sort of death has a kind of finality to it. And it sounds um, like a radical closure, um, an end to something. Um, but once you sort of read postmodern deconstruction in the way that Caputo does, instead of radical theology being associated with death and finality and closure, one can sort of see it more affirmatively, more positively. And so along with Caputo, I would say that the desire for God outlives the death of God. And that becomes really important to how I try to articulate a changed radical theology for the future. From Malibu, um, I really get the concept of change. Um, her work is in neurophilosophy, in which she borrows from the world of neurophilosophy the idea of the brain's plasticity. Uh, the brain is always changing. It's not a static organism, but instead it's responsive. It's adaptive. Uh, it's resilient. And based on that notion of the brain's plasticity, she talks about nature in general and the idea that sort of within nature in general, there's always this kind of capacity for resistance and the inevitability of change. Um, and so philosophically speaking, what that means is that being or the nature of reality isn't some static essence. But instead, there's a metabolic ontology at work. Uh, to be is to change. To be is to always be changing. And so to think about how this relates to the idea of radical theology, instead of, again, instead of talking about the death of God, we can talk about the, the idea of sort of God as change. God as a source of change, or God as an agent of change. And to, to live in the image and likeness of God, is the recognition that we too have the capacity to change, not only ourselves, but to change the world as well. And so by combining the work of Caputo with the work of Malibu, um, this provides the kind of theoretical resources for me to rethink radical theology of the future.